Sure. Does God love atheists? Does God love atheists? Yes, of course. But, but, but have they, they received God's yes, divine love? Yes. No. But mind you, when I say no there, it depends, you see. Because they might intellectually think they're an atheist, but they may actually have a soul longing for God at the same time. And this happens quite often. For example, people who go to war living in a foxhole think they're an atheist most of the time. But when the bombs are dropping, there, there is often a soul longing right, for God's love at that moment. And they receive it just like anyone else would at that moment. So it's actually to do with the soul. If in the soul they were an atheist, in the sense that in the soul level they do not ever have a longing for God's divine love. Is that possible? Uh, yeah, it is possible. They're all the people in the sixth sphere are in this state. Right? Most, all, almost all the people in the sixth sphere, and there's billions of spirits in the sixth sphere, are in the state where they've rejected the gift of God's love. This is why it's so important for you to see that love is a gift. Right? Because you can reject gifts, yes? You can actually say, no, I don't want that gift. And there's billions of spirits in the spirit world, and there's billions of people on earth who are rejecting the gift of God's love. You can reject the gift of God's love, and therefore you will not receive it. God wants to give it, but can't give it while you're in that state. No, that's not true. The truth is that it is possible to not long for God's love in your pristine state. Amon and Amen, the first human couple on earth, did exactly this. This is why we have many of the problems we have now. They chose self-reliance over God's reliance. And they were in a perfect state but did not long for God's love. So there are literally billions of spirits in the spirit world in a perfect state and they do not long for God's love. Everyone on earth and in the spirit world is going to be given the opportunity to long for God's love. But there are going to be ones who choose to not long for it. Uh, just on the issue of, about God's love, um, this thought it was relevant to point out that God has actually created a really loving universe for us to live in. Uh, like it's an expression of God's love. Um, all of the laws that um, act upon our lives, the law of attraction, the law of desire, the law of compensation, they're all very loving gifts that we have to actually bring our soul into a, into a really good condition. And, um, and the, the whole creation of the world is it's a very beautiful gift of love to us. So while it's not the same as receiving divine love, we actually have been born into a very loving space. So, so it's important to understand that God loves you and God has given you all of these other gifts. But this very personal gift, this gift of divine love that can enter your soul, is a thing you need to personally ask for before you will receive it. And that's the thing I taught in the first century, and that's the thing I'm still teaching now, that it's exactly this. You need to ask for divine love. It is not a given thing. It's not something that's already there without you asking for it. It's something that only comes to you when you ask for it. In total, and it's about this personal relationship with God. God is not forcing you into having a personal relationship with her. God is waiting for you to desire a personal relationship with her. She desires one with you. Do you desire one with her? Now, if you think about it, even in a partnership, this really operates too, doesn't it? Like, if you're in a marriage, for example, and one of you doesn't want love from the other, then it's not going to be a very harmonious relationship, is it? Right? So in the end, relationships that bind are relationships where both people have desire for the other. Each one has desire for the other. So same goes with your relationship with God. It's important that you activate your desire for God that relationship.